Christmas to you. And welcome to worship. We are going to do that wonderful thing. Hear the simple gospel and light those candles. And it's kind of a memory night, isn't it? Just a couple of words about the service. We're going to talk about the candle lighting part when we get to that. So let's just kind of skip that for now. There is child care, just in case that fits and helps uh, people. Just stay on the same level. Make your way down to the south in the hallway. And Jessica Gross and a couple of her kids are there to help provide child care tonight if you need that. The entire order of worship is in this little pre-printed Augsburg Fortress bulletin. Hasn't changed much in 30 years. And so, uh, again, I look forward to this night. And a special welcome to those who are guests with us. So many of you... I don't recognize, and that's a wonderful thing. That's a blessing to have you here tonight. Please stand as we sing our entrance hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as only the Son of the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated at this time. Special music.
First reading, familiar words from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is the Christmas prophet and describes most clearly the one who would come and a new covenant would be born. From the ninth chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, A son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
I read from Titus, the second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. We sing, Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. We sing Away in the Manger. <laughs> In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Here ends the reading of the Luke's Christmas story. We sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Dear God, this night is a gift for all people. Help us to hear old John tonight. Not young John, not new John, powerful and fighting, but old, the old man John, giving us the hope we need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, this night changes everything. We want to say that right away as we celebrate really the beginning of Christianity. A new covenant born in a manger that God would become flesh and we would know God because of this child. Christmas makes us who we are. We are the gifted ones. I hope I don't repeat that too much tonight. We are the gifted ones. Regardless of circumstance or Regardless of what you bring tonight, this angel speaking to shepherds is speaking to me, speaking to you too. And if we can hear that good news, that a Savior is born, then we, the gifted ones, become the gracious ones. We become the gracious ones in this world. Philip Yancey wrote a book entitled Meet the Bible. He writes this. An early Christian writer named Jerome tells the story of John as a very old man being carried into the church at Ephesus. The people had gathered to hear a message from the famous apostle, but he would only repeat, little children, love one another. Little children, love one another. When asked why 
He simply kept repeating, repeating that phrase. He replied, because it is the Lord's command. And if it is done, it is enough. Old John will come back to him in a little while. You see, if we say that we're claimed, that God came into this world and claimed humanity, loving in spite of faults, okay, all of that around the campfire, those shepherds, all of that claimed by Christ means we can become Christ to others. To hear these words again, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. We cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Well, how about that for a Merry Christmas to those first shepherds around that hillside campfire. I mean, how about that for a start of this conversation tonight about being the gifted ones, the ones to whom God says, you're worth it. God, the giver of the gift. You and I then, if we hear that gospel, if I can find a way tonight to have you hear the gospel that you're worth saving, that unto you is born a savior, then we we become like the shepherds. We become like that old John says we ought to become. Go out and do it. Be grace. Do kindness. Do love. You and I, shepherds, soon to have candles lit. Kids, I promise it's coming really soon. I got that look from you down here. It's coming. We're going to huddle around those candles as if it's our campfire, and we just wait for this miracle to really somehow grab us and make sense unto you is born a savior. I wish I, I wish I could take the time and I wish I was this good. I wish I could say everybody's name on a Christmas Eve night in the reading of the gospel. For unto you is born a savior. So yes, we're the gifted ones, the ones who become love to others. Now, young John, young John, the one who writes the big Christmas gospel we're going to read from a little bit, he was loaded. He wrote a huge gospel. Many people think it's as weighty, it's as important as the other three all added together. It's certainly different than the other three gospels, no doubt. And in that great, big, young John gospel, where he's fighting Gnosticism and he's debating some of the doctrinal differences of the day already, it's near the end of the first century when this gospel is finally codified and written. But tonight, I want us to remember the old John, some 50 years older. He's been hauled off to Patmos Island, incarcerated. He's a prisoner. From the year 95 AD to 97 AD, he's on Patmos Island in very severe conditions. He is released. He's allowed to come back to Ephesus, which is his home church, but he's very, very frail. He's the one carried in to a congregation just like this, about this size. And what he wrote at the very end of his life isn't huge and big at all. It's little letters. First John, second John, third John. First John, second John, third John. Written with a fifth grade vocabulary. He'd given up on all the, the, the doctrinal debates. But only 300 words, different words, are used to write all three letters. And it's because he wants to keep it simple. The old man has wisdom now. And so, for instance, in the first letter of John, listen to this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves knows God. He that doesn't love doesn't know God. You don't know Christmas if you don't love. There sat old, frail Apostle John, the last apostle living, by the way. He was the last of the 12. Carried in and propped up in a pew. And all he kept saying was, love each other. You are so perfectly loved yourself. Doesn't matter what's gone on in your life. That you can become that to other people. It's your purpose. It's what Christmas is about. Kind of like this, maybe. 
was Harvey, North Dakota in the afternoon. It was fall, I think November, but it was mid to later fall. And I was new, new pastor at First Lutheran Church in Harvey, and I was out visiting. I'd been given the name of an old bachelor farmer who'd moved into town some months, maybe a few years before. I don't know. I was still learning. I was given his address, and it was just about the sun was about down. And I knock on the little independent living apartment door, totally black. And I thought, well, he's not around. But I gave it one more try. Kind of, you know, rattled, rattled the window frames this time, really. And I know I woke him up in the recliner. I know I did. I could hear a little movement inside the apartment. So I stepped back, you know, give him that space. It took a long time. I saw a lamp clicked on. When he fell asleep in that recliner, it was bright daylight out. That's all I'm telling you. It's dark now. Took him a while to turn some lamps on. Then he opened the door about six inches, and he said politely enough, but kind of cautiously, what can I help you with? And I told him, I'm the new pastor up there in the church on the hill, and I'm just out getting acquainted, and I want to stop and introduce myself, and I don't know if now's a good time. Well, he shut the door, and then more lights getting clicked on inside. This was all pretty slow motion. Then the chain came off the door, and he opened it wide up, and he kind of went like that. And he grabbed his walker and straight to the kitchen, and he had a fairly fresh cup of coffee. <laughs> and I remember talking to him, and he sat down, and he kind of took his fist and pounded the table, and he said, ah, I'm so sorry, I was kind of standoffish there. I thought you were an insurance salesman. <laughs> sell me more insurance. There's this guy who keeps coming around. He won't leave me alone. I thought that's... And I said, no, I'm not selling insurance. And we had a visit, and it was the first of, of several good visits with this man. And I think back on that visit now, and I thought, what was my purpose? What was my purpose for going to that door? In a way, I kind of am in the business of life insurance. We're not going to be here forever. This gospel, this Jesus Christ risen from the dead, it's kind of important stuff. Now, if I had gone there kind of with that attitude that my job was to win this man back and kind of get him back into a policy, why, we kind of have to measure him up a little bit. Is he a high risk? Is he a low risk? You know, does, uh, have you done enough of this? Have you done enough of that? Do you tithe? How often were you to church last year? We got we to gotta see if we can sell you a policy or not. That is, of course, not why I went there. It was not to get him to come back up the hill to First Lutheran and sit in a pew. It wasn't. That's not a bad place to be, by the way. Broken people, all the same, trying to figure things out. That's a congregation, at least a healthy one. Broken people, all needing to hear that a Savior is born and working at it together. Now, it wouldn't have hurt him to come up the hill, but I didn't come with my agenda other than the gospel's agenda. I wanted him to know I knew of him and that someone in the church knew of him and gave me his name and said, go find him. I wanted him to know he had worth and if he could make his way up the hill, fine, but I know I told him, we're going to keep in touch. Is it okay if I stop again? I'll bring you communion if you want. We're in the business not of insurance. That gets into measurements that just don't work. You and I as the baptized are in the business of life assurance with an A. Assurance. That we can remind the people that we bump into that you are worth it. And you may think the world doesn't see you and you may think you don't have worth. I'm here. I'm here to tell you that you are a child of God and that unto you a Savior has been born. This Christ child to shepherds and then the blind and then the lame and tax collectors and sinners right along with hard-working fishermen like John, son of Zebedee, who when he was young went out and fought fights for the gospel. But when he was old, this old man carried into the church at Ephesus, he spoke of love and the need for you and I to love not hold grudges, not keep score. God doesn't. I believe that old Apostle John was with me when I made that stop up there in that apartment in Harvey. 
And I believe that somehow that old Apostle John was carried into these pews tonight. He's somewhere. He's somewhere wiggled in nice and tight. And he just wants us to leave knowing we're loved. And that we can be the living church. Light shining in the darkness. We'll read those words in just a moment. Light shining in the darkness. We are the gifted ones. And the darkness cannot overcome it. We then the gracious ones true of all of us tonight. Merry Christmas. This time we'll receive your Christmas Eve offerings and a men's chorus group will gather up front and sing during uh, the offering time tonight. We sing our offertory hymn, What Child Is This? You may remain seated, please.
We now come to that candle lighting part of the service and just a couple of words. First, the ushers will walk forward and off the Christ candle. Then we pass the flame uh, through uh, the sanctuary. Uh, ushers holding their candle, keeping it vertical. The unlit candle is tipped always. And then hold it over your bulletin, hold it over your dress, something. Just don't let it hit the pews of the carpet. <laughs> kind of, dress is clean up. Anyway. But try to keep the wax from going too far and watch the kids. We don't need someone's hair getting caught on fire. We're really packed in tonight. But um, all, is, all is now prepared. And ushers, please come forward. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace and upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one's ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. We sing. Pardon me. We join in the prayers of the church, responsive in your bulletin in the back panel. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to God, the people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Wonderful Counselor. You enlighten the heart with steadfast love. Enlighten your church that they might bear the tidings of great joy to all people. Blessed are you, Emmanuel. You promise to be with us even to the end of the age. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. We sing Silent Night.
pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. As the lights are coming back up, we'll wait for them, but carefully, with the hand behind your flame, you can blow your candles out. And please stand as we exit the building. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Stand, please stand for this concluding song. Thank you. 